How are we doing today? Good. So I think we did a lot of good things in the last game. I think one of the things that probably uh, we need to get corrected is, you know, we did get three turners overs defensively, but we also had three turnovers. So, you know, ball security is, you know, a very important part of being successful. Uh, gives the other team three extra possessions, possessions where you could have scored. So, um, and I think the emphasis has to continue to be on, you know, whenever you're less than perfect in terms of your execution, whether it's fundamental execution uh, or whatever it is, uh, that's when you get exposed. So um, that's why we got to keep coaching our team uh, to get it right on a, on a consistent basis. Uh, this is one of the greatest, you know, rivalry games in college football. And, you know, most every team in rivalry games, you know, sort of it's a part of their legacy in terms of how, how did they do in the rivalry game. And this is one of the biggest ones, and it means a lot to a lot of people in our state. It means a lot to, you know, us, our players, and our fans. And we're going to do the best job we can to, you know, get ready for, you know, this game. I think Cadillac Williams has done a really, really good job. Um, they played really well uh, these last three games. Um, you know, they run the ball effectively. Uh, they got a lot of diversity on offense. Uh, the quarterback's a very athletic player who can run and throw. Um, Tank is one of the better backs in, in the SEC. Uh, their defense is very, very aggressive. Um, you know, Papone is a really good inside backer. Hall is a really good rusher. Uh, makes a lot of, creates a lot of negative plays. They're very good on special teams. So uh, this is a very challenging, uh, you know, game for us. And our players are going to have to do a great job of getting prepared to play uh, as well as we played all season. You mentioned how well they've played these last three games. When you're watching film, is there maybe a notice, noticeable difference between now and maybe the start of the season? No, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I just think they're playing really well now. Uh, I don't want to, I'm not making an evaluation. You know, I thought they played hard all year long. I think they're, you know, players really compete well and they've done that all year long and uh, they just played really well in the last three games. How has the challenge evolved for Will Anderson this season as teams make adjustments to his skill set? Uh, Will's done great for us. Uh, Will helps other players play better. Uh, it's not just all about what you do. He does his job extremely well. Uh, if they're focusing on him a little bit more, I think it gives other players opportunities to make plays. And uh, But I think he's he competes, he plays hard, uh, he gives great effort, he sets a good example, he prepares well. Uh, we can't ask any more of Will Anderson than what he does, and I think he helps our team as much as any player on our team. We got to see Elijah Prishett play a little bit against Austin P. How long did it take him to get back to practice from his injury, and how has he looked in practice since he did? Uh, I think he started back like the bye week you know, right around LSU time. So he's been out there practicing for several weeks now and um, mostly on the scout team. Uh, but as he's kind of gotten back in shape and gotten back in football form, um, you know, he's a guy that certainly has done extremely well um, and we think can be a really, really good player. He's got power, he can bend. Uh, he's got good balance and body control. So, you know, somebody that we want to continue to work and develop. How was senior day on Saturday kind of an opportunity to recognize what some of not just the star players, but maybe the walk-ons have done for this program over the last four or five years? Well, I think it's an opportunity for us, myself, uh, all the coaches, uh, people at the university, our fans, uh, to actually show um, the appreciation that we all have for, you know, the sacrifices and the investment that these guys have made, you know, in the program for the last four years, sometimes five. And, um, you know, some of them get a lot of positive accolades uh, because they play and they get a lot of positive self-gratification for the positive performance. But there's a lot of them who, you know, are kind of unsung heroes in terms of, 
you know, they work hard every week and they play their games on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to help the other guys get prepared for the game and don't get a whole lot of recognition. So uh, it is a great opportunity for those guys to get some positive self-gratification for all their efforts. Uh, last year in, in this game, Corey Brooks made some huge plays. Um, what can young guys learn from what he did to step up in, in that kind of those big moments uh, as far as this year's game goes? Well, I, I think that you know we need to get all of our players to play to the best of their ability and understand when they have opportunities to make plays. Um, that, that's what competition is all about. That's what competing in games like this is all about. And that should be their mindset. And I don't think it, I mean, anytime you got a young player who makes outstanding plays, I think it sets a good example for everybody else on the team that they have the opportunity, uh, capability, and possibilities to do the same thing. But they got to do things right to be able to have that happen. And so, you know, hopefully, you know, we got some young receivers. Hopefully they'll step up. You had challenged the offensive line early in the season to play more physically. Just how did you see them respond to that, and what sort of growth have you seen from them throughout the year? Yeah, well, I, th I thought this last week was one of the better games we played up front. Um, we sort of dominated the line of scrimmage, you know, fairly well. Finished a lot of blocks. I think we blocked on the perimeter better than we have all year. Talking about the receivers and and so forth. So, um, you know, I saw a step in the in the right direction, and hopefully we can. And I saw it in the Ole Miss game as well, especially in the second half. Um, we started, you know, dominating the line of scrimmage a little bit, which I think is a really important thing, and it'll be a great challenge for us this week. When you're, <clears throat> sorry, when you're having success running the ball in, in a specific direction in, in one game, does that influence your play calling? Do you kind of ride the hot side or hot hand in that regard? Well, I, I think you know sometimes you do things based on what the other team's doing. You know, and some some of the runs get sort of packaged relative to where's the strength of their defense or what are they doing. So, um, I mean, in certain situations, if you think you have significant good matchups on one side of the line versus the other, they may change from week to week. But um, that's where you would probably choose to run the ball. Hey, coach. In a game like this, as you said, that means so much to so many. This week, do you allow your players to lean into that? Or if not, how do you get your players to focus on this and treating it like it's any other game? I don't really I don't understand the question totally. Um, <laughs> Just in a big game like this, is this a, a week that you're going to allow your players to lean into all that noise and all that extra juice outside of the game? Or do you still try to keep it like it's just any other game? Well, you know, it's they're all big games. And this is obviously a rivalry game, which makes it a, a special game and a special challenge. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't, we, we've tried all year long to get our players to focus on being motivated internally in terms of what they want to accomplish and what they want to do, um, how good they want to be, rather than counting on external factors to sort of create that motivation for them. But I think in games like this, you know, there's going to be some external factors that, you know, may, may be a positive for some of the guys. Uh, I can't discount that. Coach, he was, a, he was a great running back at Auburn, but I mean, how have you seen Cadillac Williams kind of infuse juice into the program right now as the interim coach? No, he's done a great job. Um, the energy, the enthusiasm, the way the guys are competing and playing, um, the way they played to win um, is, and that was his personality as a player. You know, I remember when I was a coach at the Miami Dolphins, you know, Ronnie Brown and Cadillac were both coming out the same time in the same draft, and we thought they were both great competitors, and he certainly was a great competitor, and I think his personality shows in the way his team competes. We'll finish up with Charlie. Uh, we haven't seen Kyrie Jackson in the last two games. Do you have an update on his status? Uh, he's uh, suspended right now. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, happy Thanksgiving out there to everybody if I don't get a chance to tell you. <laughs>